Why launch pads are the future of development and engineering for NFTs. Come on up, my friend. You have our attention, and we're ready to learn from you. Uh, my name is Drew Griffin. I'm one of the co-founders of One Mint, which is an NFT launchpad. Uh, we've been around for about a year and have launched 150 projects so far. And super excited to be talking to you all today. I think this conversation, although it's 10 minutes, I really just want to talk about some key points that hopefully will really leave you all with some takeaways or kind of reconsider some things when looking at potentially launching an NFT, minting something on chain, or just really make you think outside the box. So just to kind of introduce the topic, um, obviously NFTs are gaining popularity, otherwise we wouldn't be here. They're definitely revolutionizing the space in regards to ownership, authenticity, all the panels we just uh, heard listen, you know, some very great points. Um, but the issue can be is creating NFTs. It's very complex. I think for a lot of us when we were onboarding, it was very difficult to even understand what an NFT is and then to get to the point to purchase it and then to really understand the functionality behind it as to, okay, how does this NFT actually get on chain and how do I prove ownership? Um, so simply put, launchpads offer a very simplified and efficient way to go ahead, create and deploy NFTs, making them crucial for the industry uh, and its future endeavors. So, you know, when we're talking about launching NFTs. A lot of it has to do with technological barriers that I think a lot of us run into in regards to coding smart contracts, understanding how to manage a whitelist or an allow list, just many complexities that go into it in regards to a successful deployment, whether that be one of one art, whether that be real estate, fractionalization, uh, PFPs, anything like that. And when you're looking for someone to code this for you, it's very hard to get a sense of their background and the confidence that they've done this before. There won't be any issues because any issue that happens at all can pretty much destroy all your entire work that you have been doing for X amount of months. Um, if you go on Fiverr and you look and you type in smart contract developer, you will find a nice range of smart contract developers from $5 all the way up to $50,000. And there's absolutely no way for you to verify their background because most of the time, any founder does not have the technical knowledge or depth to really prove or ask the right questions to see exactly what they're referring or what they're talking about. And you get what you pay for wholeheartedly. So the role of launchpads in the NFT development really is they offer anyone who does not have any technical background to essentially come into where we're going to be as self-service self kind of GUIs or websites to where you go click, 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 you've deployed your smart contract, you've uploaded your metadata, your images, you've managed your whitelist, you've managed your allow list, and really just kind of covering everything A to Z development and engineering wise needed to go ahead and successfully launch your business or project. Um, a lot of the stronger launch pads do offer a streamlined service. So it's not necessarily that, you know, I like to call it a, a, a BYOD, which is a bring your own developer. They really kind of offer everything wholeheartedly that you would need to go ahead and deploy that. And then not only that, they allow you to go ahead and have uh, a team behind you, more than just one person that's kind of handling everything. There's QA, there's testing, there's assurances. Most of the developers in the space that are credible are doxxed and just a lot of things that follow that as well. And they provide opportunities to essentially eliminate human error, which is the biggest risk, bugs, money getting stuck in the contract, which unfortunately, hopefully no one's been affected. I've been affected, metadata issues, and just a ton of other things. Now, a lot of this is included, but not limited to a bunch of words that you see on the screen here. Now, again, that's a smooth launch process that's offering kind of Web 2, Web 2.5 onboarding, so the ability to mint and debit or credit cards, the ability to mint an ApeCoin, for example. Uh, we just launched a project last night with the new ERC-4337 at an event. So you could go in, you could go to the Mint site, you log in with Google, and it's minted. They don't need to worry about a seed phrase, they don't need to worry about a wallet, they don't need to worry about anything, because that's the advancements that Vitalik just launched two weeks ago to really go ahead and have a sign-in feature and then on the back end, it uses Gnosis Safe, which is a multi-sig wallet, predominantly, if you're familiar with it, to go ahead and do all the back end for you. You get an email with the instructions on how to access it, and boom, it's that easy. Uh, a lot of that also has lower cost. I had a buddy of mine run a, and he's still doing this, but run a cross comparison of individual smart contracts that were hand-coded 
versus launchpad contracts that have been used over and over and over again that are actually optimized. And give or take, there's about a $35,000 difference in optimization in gas, right? Gas, like wasted gas. That is the difference of using a launch pad or an individual developer because maybe they're just not the most proficient in optimizing it or maybe they just don't know any shortcuts or using something off chain, which kind of adds to the gas. So from a founder perspective, you think about it, because you may not have the most effective or optimized gas contract, that's a waste of $35,000 that could have gone into your project that instead went right to the fees and the miners. And so if you think about that on a 5K, 6K, 10K NFT project, that makes all the difference. So examples of some successful launch pads in this space. So of course, number one, I'm biased. I'm the co-founder of OneMint. That's up there first. We've successfully launched over uh, 200 projects with 200 plus contracts deployed. Uh, Manifold has actually launched over 40,000 contracts. Now, of course, Manifold is a free to use service that's very, very popular in all the one-on-one -on -one artists. The team over there is absolutely phenomenal. It's super awesome. And that's really helped propel the one-of-one -one space. Magic Eden, they just expanded their Polygon Launchpad, their ETH Launchpad, and then of course they've always had their Soul Launchpad, and they've launched over 350 projects. And then OpenSea with their beta Launchpad right now, they've launched over 40 collections so far, all featuring them on the home page, which I'm sure we've all seen and been very familiar with. So the big question is, you know, how do Launchpads simplify NFT development? Well, really any Launchpad, regardless of which one you choose, they provide step-by-step -step processes in which you actually go through to go ahead and create this. So you don't really need to go to Etherscan to you know, maybe worry about the metadata. You don't need to go there to withdraw anything. It's a very simple, easy mechanism to go ahead and do that all from a website with no techni technological background needed. So it really does break down that barrier of entry for someone to get into the NFT space, regardless if they have Web3 native or not. Um, launchpads have a lot of QA assurances, so not only is it tested, it's secure, it's reliable. The team behind the project obviously again is trusted, it's very secure, uh, and there's many other tools that they can go ahead and provide beyond just you know, a smooth minting experience from a consumer standpoint, again i.e. the example of ERC4337 or credit debit card minting, you name it. The more or the less clicks that we can go ahead and enable the consumers to get involved, the better experiences that they'll go ahead and have. Um, which makes it just as frictionless as possible, not only for the consumer, but also for the founder. Now, just like I said, uh, so this was a project about a year ago. Uh, I'm not going to say the project or the developer name. Development is very hard. But the point being is that this was a super popular project, uh, did not get the contract audited, and the developer did not test every single feature, which one of the main features you should test is withdrawing the funds. This was a Dutch auction, and if you still go look at this contract today, there is 11,539.5 ETH sitting in a wallet that is stuck there for the end of life, uh, which at the time was valued at 34 million, and now I think it's about 17 million. And something as simple as just QA testing with the withdrawal function on testnet for this contract would have went ahead and saved all that money. But instead, it's locked, because uh, as soon as you deploy a contract, it's immutable, which is the whole point of decentralization, and there's no way to get that unlocked at all. Uh, so, you know, the future of NFT development with launchpads really is to go ahead and streamline and simplify the process, create easier UIs, go ahead and allow partner and collaborations with other businesses to really help propel the space in general, keep Web3 decentralized. As much as we think Web3 is decentralized, it's kind of pseudo decentralized. There's still a lot of centralized exchange, backends, or technology that's used i.e. AWS and other aspects, right? That isn't truly decentralized. Expand cross-chain, you know, we're not just all on ETH. We have to go ahead and have interoperability between chains for many differences, features, and audiences. And then incorporate features such as staking, vaulting, swaps, wrapping, et cetera, you name it. So if you have any questions and you want to connect, definitely feel free to follow me on Twitter. Uh, shoot me a message with any questions. I will definitely be outside. But hopefully it just kind of makes you think or just think outside the box of if you know anyone that wants to launch an NFT project, one-on-one art, just kind of consider, wait out your options, and, you know, think outside the box and help propel the space. Thank you so much. I found that to be quite helpful. If the slide man could go back to the slide with your company and the other three on there. And Wendy, we're about ready to have you come up. 
Um, I just want to say something quickly about, no, it was in the middle. It had the other three companies. And so here's what I want to say. Congratulations on your success. Thank you for bringing something that's meaningful to the market. I think if more people knew about what you could provide, more folks would engage with it. So I'd tell you in the room and you watching on YouTube, like let people know about Winmint. But let me also say how nice to have a great company come up and acknowledge that there's other players in the space. They're also doing great things, not throwing stones, being honorable about it. So thank you for taking that approach. I appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Anytime. Well, we thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right.